Well, I think Albertans were looking for some leadership tonight to get some idea from the Premier about what exactly she was going to do to deal with the budget crisis and get us back into a balanced budget. And instead, we got a promise of a conversation to start another conversation. I think what we're seeing with the Premier is she doesn't really have a plan for how to meet her budget promises. What we saw, again, is the same kind of mixed message. She's promising to hold the line on spending, to not raise taxes, and she was absolutely silent on the issue of debt. I think people want to know how deep into debt is this Premier going to take us? And she gave absolutely no answers tonight. Instead, all we got was a bad rerun. And we, we don't need a summit, we need some answers. I, I think that they've, she's been Premier now for over a year. The issue of the differential in our oil prices has been a problem that she knew about during the budget deliberations. She knew about it during the election. She can't pretend it's new now. And the fact that she doesn't have any answers a year in when we're facing this serious budget crisis, I think demonstrates that we're on a very bad track for the coming years. I, it doesn't do any good to talk about how we might have pipelines four or five or six years from now. What is the plan over the next three or four or five years to get us accustomed to this new reality of lower energy prices and lower revenues? I don't think that we've seen any answers out of this premier, and hopefully we'll be able to see some on March the 7th. My answers and our answers in the Wild Rose are very straightforward. We've been putting forward an alternative budget for the last three years. It's very simple. You hold the line on year over year spending increases. You have a capital plan that goes out over 10 years so you can meet all your priorities without running deficits. And you also find ways to cut wasteful spending. This is not rocket science. If you knew that the budget she put forward last year was not going to materialize, the, the revenue projections were outlandish, not just on oil and gas revenues, but also on income tax revenues as well. There was no possible way that we were going to see those numbers pan out. So are we surprised that it's going to be a shortfall based on those projections? Not at all. The fact of the matter is every other province in this country would kill to have the revenue problems that Alberta has. We, are, we still have the highest per capita revenues of any other province. The big problem here is that we also have the highest per capita spending. The issue is on the spending side. They've had a problem of overspending for well over a decade. Nothing new. There was no vision. There are no solutions, and I think it's disappointing to Albertans that we didn't see any answers tonight either. I think what we're going to see is a, a, a bucket of, of red ink. We're going to see an increasing amount of, of debt. We're going back to the era that we were in prior to Klein coming in. We're going back to Getty era debt and deficits, and I think that is not what Albertans voted for in the last election. The, the fact of the matter is we have had a differential on these two prices for years. This is not anything that's new. The, the, the problem is that they, were, they had rosy projections, they did not pan out, and they have constantly relied on energy prices to try to bail them out of a problem of overspending. And now they're trying to blame the revenue side. It's not a problem on the revenue side. It's a problem on the spending side. We've always known in this province that we are going to have volatility in energy prices. We have seen volatility on oil. We've seen all volatility on gas. We're now seeing volatility on this differential. We have always known that that is the case in Alberta. What happened in the Klein years is that they always underestimated revenues so that at the end of the year, if things ended up being better, we ended up with a nice surprise of having a surplus. This government got into a bad habit now of overestimating revenue, so at the end of the year we're running deficits. We are still, even with these numbers, looking at the potential of five, six, or seven billion dollars worth of resource revenue in a given year. That is a level of windfall income that no other province enjoys.